I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto, giving us the millennial perspective. How you doing, Big Dave? I'm doing good. So this week, our topic is change, creating the shift. David, on Mondays with the Super Millennial, had to do a throwback called the Millennial Dilemma. On Health Huddles today, we're going to talk and ask the question, could stress actually be good? On Meeting of the Minds, we are going to dive into the creation mind. On Connection Thursday this week, we're going to talk about the immense release and creating that shift in consciousness. And we will continue on Friday, our book study, A Happy Pocket Full of Money by David Cameron Giandi. Big Dave, what you got going on, buddy? Uh, We're just moving along. Guys in the community, you guys are doing awesome. Uh, I like the engagement. I like that everybody's going through the lesson. We're able to look at uh, how many of you actually gone through the new lesson. And uh, big majority of you guys have already went through. So it's looking like it's time to start setting up the uh, Q&A um, for this module. So okay. we could go through, have the community ask questions. If you guys want to get into the community, just go to www.stressmasterycommunity.com. Links are below. It is free for the first 30 days. Yeah, come on in and join us, man. We got a lot of good things going on in there. So this week, our topic is change and creating the shift. In today's Health Huddles, I'm in a discussion. I have a question for you. Could stress actually be good? I'd say yes. Well, we're going to (laughs) see. So in 2013, researchers from Stanford and FSU, Florida State University, conducted a survey of adults aged 18 to 78 about whether or not their lives felt meaningful. There was a array of situations through the survey, but one thing emerged as a key component for their life to be meaningful. And that one thing was stress. Through the study, stress emerged as a key component to those who felt their lives had the most meaning. Then Gallup Worldwide did a poll that was similar to this and they got the same results. It was discovered that stress without meaning is harmful to your health. But when stress has meaning, it creates fulfillment in one's life. Your thoughts on that? Uh, I think it's crazy that uh, stress creates meaning. Like I said, I do stick by, I think a certain level of stress can be good. But what? having or creating meaning for someone's life, that doesn't even sound healthy to say. Well, let's get into it because that's good. Because <laughs> when I read that, I was a little bit shocked, but it all made sense to me as I, as I, that's what I wanted to do this episode on. Because we're talking this week on creating change and creating a shift. When we look at stress, I guess stress can be defined as the degree to which you feel overwhelmed or unable to cope as pressures you cannot manage. And this is how most people and medical professionals will describe stress. It is stated by the World Health Organization that stress is actually now an epidemic. In the medical field, stress is tied as the ultimate cause of all illness. And here's the challenge I have with that. Stress is not a disease. Mm -hmm. stress causes the disease doctors state 90 percent of the patients they see is due to stress related illnesses but stress is not a disease right you agree with me yeah for sure so we can see how i guess you could believe that stress is bad correct yeah right Mm -hmm. but the question we must ask ourselves is this true is stress bad What if stress is good? The studies we talked about earlier are telling us that individuals who have the most meaning in their lives, that stress is one of the key reasons. If stress is bad, how can this be so? 
What if we were to change our programming about stress, our belief system about stress? What if stress is an indicator that something requires your attention? Is that bad? No, not at all. Right? What if stress allows the emotion in the body to release the red zone program held in mind? Is that bad? No. What if stress changed your perception of how you see the world? Is that bad? No. See, that could be. <laughs> you know, think about it, it though. It sounds meaningful, yeah, maybe. <laughs> what if stress pushes you beyond your limits? Expanding your comfort zone. Is that bad? No. See, we don't think of it this way. What if stress was what actually put your body under stress and as it repaired, increased your metabolism and gave you more freedom? Is that bad? Yeah, no. It's just, I believe it's time to slow down and let's take another look at this so-called epidemic called stress. I, I mean, I, I was just, when I read that, I was... I. It, it intrigued me because every day, every day, I hear stress referred to as if it is an emotion or a feeling, I feel so stressed out, right? Yeah. The emotion, the feeling one is having is not stress. It is the program activated in head. It's not, this is not stress. Well, yes, it's stressing your system. It's stressing your mind. It's stressing your perception and expectation of how something should be. And it's your body supporting the mind by revving up your system. So you feel stress. In most cases, that is not what would be stress. It's a program causing guilt, a program causing anger, a program, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, that's why people feel stressed out. And what happens is, is that body revs up and they feel stressed out. Eventually, it depresses the system and now they feel depressed. Yeah. You with me? Mm -hmm. But stress, as we have explained stress over a thousand, sixty now episodes we're nearing, close, something around there, a thousand fifty. Right at around 50. Right, right there, right? We've explained that stress really is not good or bad. It just is. It's how you decide. Yes, it's actually a decision on how you will relate to so-called stress. So here's how I look at it. I look at stress as a program activated, a conflict. The feeling I have in the body, the emotion and the energy is of that program I look at that as an opportunity. It's an opportunity where we can release a program and create a shift. You cannot release a program or create a shift unless that program's activated and consciously let go. Well, how do you know if it's activated? You know through the feeling mm -hmm. in the body, but the moment you call that feeling being stressed out, what happens? Yeah, everything starts to, to lock down on you. It revs up, yeah. right? You, you create it. So thinking about the feeling that you have. You can have the feeling of being critical. That's 175 pride red zone energy. The feeling of resentment is 150 anger red zone energy. The feeling of frustration is a 125 desire red zone energy. The feeling of worry is a 100 fear red zone energy. The feeling of disappointment is a 75 grief red zone energy. The feeling of boredom is a 50 apathy red zone energy. The feeling of regret is a 30 guilt red zone energy. The feeling of humiliation is a below 30 red zone energy of shame. If you just label all these as stress, how can you become conscious enough to be aware of what is activated and able to let go? Yeah, I think um, the big realization that I had is in a self-defense situation, that was real stress to me. Like, I felt my body and? immediately lock up. I felt my blood pressure going up. I was ready to fight or fight in that moment. And that's what 
when I noticed the same thing about uh, getting overworked for something that happened at work, I felt the same type of things happening to me. And one was a life threatening situation and one was a bad email. That's yeah. why I noticed the, how stress was to my body. I'm telling you, we get all these, we have this conception, this program, this belief system around stress, how bad it is. And we have to try to control it and all this. And it's just not true. Mm -hmm. It's just the program activated. There's another mis big misconception about stress is that the source of stress is external. It's outside ourselves. Yes, you may have drama in your relationships, conflict at work. Yes, there is a worldwide pandemic. But do these things have to put you in a stressed out state? Stressed out now. Exactly. We could tell ourselves a story. My work is overwhelming. My spouse is really frustrating. But it doesn't mean you have to be overwhelmed or frustrated. In fact, I will go as far as to say it is impossible for you to become overwhelmed or frustrated. Your ego, yes. You, no. I'll talk more about that tomorrow when I talk on the creation mind. Someone cannot frustrate you. Sure, someone can go against your perceptions programs, your expectation of what should be. Sure, they can create a grievance and a activate the resentment program, but they cannot make you feel stressed out. Mm -hmm. Yes, they can activate the, the human construct, set off the alarm system, set the stress loop. The mind identity, the ego goes in, takes over a red zone energy. The body identity supports the mind and you feel frustrated. You're an identity base sets your state and event judgment reaction. Yes, that can happen. Mm -hmm. But when you're an event judgment reaction, who has conscious mind control? Mm. Yes, the ego has conscious mind control. Mm. You have to see this. If you slow down, you will see that the frustration you feel is a story the ego is blasting in your head to drive your behavior in anger, reacting to the person who activated your program. That was a mic drop moment there. That was a good <laughs> one, right? Because think about it. The moment you slow down, you become conscious. Mm -hmm. And what happens to the human construct? One, the recuperation system green zone turns on. The stress loop is broken. The vagus nerve connects. Mind identity, you become mindful and take conscious mind control. Body identity, body supports the mind, now relaxes, and now your identity base is event awareness and response. Response can be pointing out what, in your response, this person that frustrated you, the response can be pointing out what the other person said. You can respond to it. Or did, in other words, resolving it. The response can be pausing and saying, I need to go sit with this situation. I'll come back to you with the resolution. Or the response can be just to let it go because you don't have control over it. Yeah. It's always the response is about the resolution for the situation that was activated. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think that that was one of the big lessons that you you taught me a long time ago. Nobody can make you upset. Nobody, Nobody can make can you feel anything. Ma yeah, yep. I was I used to say, man, this person ruined my day, but that person may have caught me for a moment. I ruined my day. Yes, because you you it came from outside, right? Mm -hmm. Outside you, but you kept it inside you. Yeah. Right. So if you're stressed out, basically you have a conflict with no resolution. Mm -hmm. If someone, someone cannot keep you stressed out, you are holding the conflict without a resolution. And if you look at stress management, stress management really is actually self-management. You, you, stress management, the things they use for stress management, you can go get a beautiful, nice massage, feel relaxed, and then the moment you begin to drive home, you get all upset and stressed out because someone is driving slow in the fast lane. 
and that whole massage just went out the window. Welcome to Florida. <laughs> Wait, wasted a hundred bucks right there, right? This cannot make you upset. Do you understand? Yeah, for sure. So, what is the millennial perspective when you on being stressed out? What is that millennial perspective? Um, of course, I'm going to take it to uh, technology because that's you know the millennial think, world. Yeah, and that's the world that I think everyone, if you're not a part of it yet, you will be. Um, it's the way that we, it doesn't let us get away from it because of notifications It's the constant reminder, whether it's good or bad notifications are going to remind you that something was said, something happened, something came up. And I think that's kind of the way that, uh, millennials deal with stress is that it's constantly popping back up, constantly popping back up. So on or off technology or social media, I see a lot of millennials not being able to let something go because, they didn't get the win. I, 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 I see it. So we, if we have to understand stress a little bit better. Why we get activated? Because here is the truth, people. You do not manage stress. Mm -hmm. I will repeat. You do not manage stress. You manage your perception and how you experience the world. There is no stress if you are in the present moment. Stress mastery is developing the skill of conflict resolution. If you are present, slow down, let go, and deal with any activation, which is a conflict, as it activates, you cannot be stressed out. In fact, to be stressed out, you must have a story in the head complaining and telling you, this is bad, I'm so worried. This should not be. When you slow down, life reveals itself and you will see that it's just a story. Life is not stressed out. Think about this. Did you ever meet a worried tree? A depressed flower? Do you understand? Yeah. It's like it just happened. What happens when we allow our state? This is allowed now to be an event judgment reaction. So... Understand, when you're in event, judgment, reaction, you're in a red zone. The ego has taken conscious mind control. But what is judgment? Judgment is simply fighting with what is. When your state is in judgment, you are fixated on the problem, on expectations not being met. You're stuck. That's all. Mm -hmm. And when you lose control of yourself, thus you lose control of your life, stress then becomes a thing. Stress is simply a conflict activated. But when conflict resolution is not processed and not done, stress becomes a thing. It's called stressed out, being stressed out. But actually, stress is a set of symptoms that results from being stuck in the alarm system of the human construct in the red zone. Yeah. So we look at these symptoms, right? Stressed out symptoms, of not dealing with conflict. The mind, programs of the mind, you'll have worrying, muddled thinking, inability to concentrate, uh, nightmares, indecisions, negativity, reaction, and hasty decisions. That's what happens when the symptoms of, of, of stress are going on in the mind. In the emotions, when the programs are activated, loss of confidence, fussy, irritability, procrastination, depression, anger, anxiousness, apprehension and the body supports the mind remains in an alarm system red zone state headaches frequent infections muscular tension fatigue skin irritations even shortness of breath and then behavior the symptom of behavior of being stuck in stress and conflict is the human being is hardwired for behavior behavior is dictated by what is held in mind and activated in mind you become accident prone over or under eating, loss of sex drive, drinking more, sleeplessness, restlessness, smoking more, increased drug use, pornography, social media abuse, television. What's it called when they watch a lot of shows? Binge watch. Binge watching, yes. So these are symptoms mm -hmm. from not activating conflict resolution. These are not symptoms of stress. I don't know how to explain it. It's from not dealing with the conflict. 
Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah no, I think that's the, the best way to kind of put it. Because if you, you know, and it was like nip it in the butt, cut it out right here. That's that's a resolution. If you're able to, you know, sit with it, get it done. And you're not stuck with it all freaking day. It's seen it. And this is the symptoms that cause disease. It's not stress causing disease. It's our lack of understanding the function and operation of the human being with body, mind, and behavior. So I asked earlier, is stress bad? <laughs> well, what do you think now? Uh, I'm sticking to my guns. No, I think uh, it's normal. I think it's a signal. Yeah. You know, stress is a signal. It's an opportunity for us to grow. We're talking this week on change and creating a shift. It is also stress. Understand that opens the comfort zone. It's stress that strengthens the body. It's stress, stress that pushes us to change, to grow mentally, physically, and spiritually. So we, if we slow down, we can see stress as a signal is good. Stress is pushing us out of our comfort zone is good. So why is stress called by the World Health Organization the new epidemic? Well, first, as I said earlier, stress is misunderstood. And as we discussed, the human being lives their life through the senses and perception of the programs held. So if anything does not meet your expectation, the human construct will set you in that state of event judgment reaction as long as this is your state of being you will be stressed out you have to have that awareness and i hope everyone who listens understands this aspect if not if this sounds confusing please get the developing the mastermind book it's free Developing the Mastermind book is free at www.livingrightwithbillcourtwright.com or in the community, it's in courses and go to resources. Mm -hmm. It's under Mastermind book because that book will explain this to you pretty simple terms. But here's another aspect about stress that is not understood. And this is a big one. You know when stress is a problem, David? When you try to avoid stress, <laughs> you actually stress yourself out. So think about this. When you attempt to avoid stress, maybe you avoid having to talk to someone who hurts you or you avoid dealing with the stress of going to the doctor for a checkup. You don't want to, you don't want to know. We know people like that, right? Or you avoid the stress of dealing with a check engine light on your car's dashboard, Right? How many people you know do that? A lot. <laughs> right? When you avoid stress, which is a conflict activated in the cage mind, you never find peace. You just build upon the conflict, the stress. At some time in the future, if this uh, avoiding stress by not dealing with your car, you're going to have to deal with it when that automobile breaks down and strands you somewhere or you ruin the car. If this avoiding stress about a conflict in a relationship, it will eventually build resentment, will grow, and the relationship will become racked in drama. Now, if you avoid going to the doctor, dealing with your health, well, you can end up in big trouble. In fact, somebody like Steve Jobs, as smart as he was, had a conflict with his health, and he decided not to deal with it. He was going to fix it himself. Well, that decision actually killed him. It was found that his cancer was a slow-growing type that if he had opted for surgery and what he didn't want to do, the conflict was he didn't want his body opened up. He, he, his chances of survival were extremely high. Mm -hmm. But by the time that he finally went to get help, it was too late. But that was not dealing with it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, back to your, your question about why is stress you know, an epidemic or being considered because nobody, like you said, has the answer for it because they don't want to resolve it. Because they don't know why they have it. Yeah. You know, I, I really do believe that if I have to slow down because I was talking to another doctor. Uh, in fact, the day we're recording this, so it would be yesterday when this was right? I was talking to a, he was a psychologist, so talking to a doctor and the stuff we talk about, people don't know. Yeah, I think a lot of people uh, relate being stressed or stressed out as a personality trait versus, you know, something that can be, 
you know, Man- mastered. Mastered, right? How many times have you put things off because it stresses you out? Just the thought of doing it stresses you out. So, you know, think about it. People avoid it. How, how can we, you know, how, how many times do you put things off? You procrastinate on because you just thought, oh, I don't want to do this. It stresses how, me how out. How much more stressful is it when it's time to actually do it? And then when you do it, it's like, wow, that was no big deal. It stressed me That was me, me all the time with homework. Yep. Yeah, that's <laughs> with everybody. So how can we use stress since we can't avoid it, right? We don't avoid stress. That That's the program activated. Mm-hmm. The, the, the deal, what we're talking about here is stress bad. That's what we're asking. Stress mastery is conflict resolution. It's a skill. If you have a conflict, a program is activated, it means the red zone is activated. Those red zone energies, which means your state of being is an event, judgment, and reaction. So there's processes. The first process is you in, in, in using stress is becoming aware you are stressed. It's awareness. We do this by using your body. Notice what you feel, how you feel. If you become aware of the emotion in the body, if you slow down enough to see where your posture is, if you see where your breath is, do you realize you'll break that stress loop immediately? That's one way to use stress. Because remember, if a program is activated and you become aware, you're releasing the program. And if you release the program, the same situation in your life can't activate it again. So that's the first process is really use stress. Become aware that you are feeling what you're feeling in your body. The second process in using stress is to slow down. See the ego. What is the story? What red zone energy is engaged? Is it rage, anger, worry, fear, sadness, grief? Is it regret, guilt? What is it? But look at what is separate the eyes. Look at the ego. Start to see it. Why is this important? Because you start to realize that it's all crap. It's all a bunch of BS. <laughs> you know, you really, the stories are ridiculous, right? Mm-hmm. The third process is, is to use that let go technique that we teach. And it's important because that let go technique really works to release the program. And it's a series of questions that raise you up in those green zone energies that dissipates the program activated, causing you to feel stress in your body. Can I allow this? Could I let this go? Be flexible. Would I let this go? Could I re-identify? By the way, when you re-identify, that's the willingness to re-identify. What you're re-identifying is, this really is not bad. I, I'm going to re-identify that this is not bad. This is, you know, that's a re-identification. And when will I let go? Now, that's acceptance. The fourth process is to observe or journal and allow the program activated to release its energy. So, don't fight the body if you if it desires to cry. Sometimes the body desires to scream, scream. But you want to journal things out. You want to release it out. Also, positive I am affirmations. If you're really in a negative state and you let go and you see it, turn it around. Use the power of awareness, of event awareness and response with an I am affirmation. The fifth process is do something that opens your expansion energy. Remember, you are one of two states. Restriction energy would be so-called stressed out. You're restricted. You want to open up the expansion energies. This could be do the work that you've been procrastinating on. Just saying, it might help. Or it may be to contact somebody you've been avoiding. It could be go for a walk. Could be slow down, take a shower. You know what I mean? It's something, no. Do something. Stress is not, this is how I'm going to close this out. All right, I'll give it to you. Stress is not bad. Stress, it can be a signal to slow down. Stress can be a signal to become aware. If you become a victim of stress, change or creating a shift that we're talking about this week is impossible. Why? Because stress is the comfort zone. You can't change without expansion of the comfort zone. Wayne Dyer, the great teacher Wayne Dyer used to say, 
You have to squeeze the orange to get the juice. That's the way I look at stress. David. That, that's a pretty good quote. I, I, yeah. I, when you put it in that perspective to, to look at it, I think that's a, a, a great way to do it. I, like I said in, in the beginning, when you have an experience that allows you to see what stress really is and what it does to the body, like I said, a, a car accident, uh, a fight, you know, a physical altercation, anything like that, when you, you, you feel your whole body just change, you can feel it. It's because we're paying attention to our bodies as we're going through this. When we go through these like every day to day things, now that I'm aware, I feel those same things happen in my body. It's sure. because I'm feeling my body. And that's like you said, bam. Oh, crap. Here's a red flag. What do I do about it? Is it something I deal with? If it's something I don't. And that's when um, I, I've really decided to stop using notifications on my phone um, and start doing a lot of things like that. Because if you just take a, the way that a, a app is designed, it's designed to keep you kind of stressed out. Keep your attention. It, it gets you in there. And like yep. I said on a podcast from last week, there's so much negativity out there. Chances are those notifications are 100% positive. If you can remove certain stresses from there, especially if you can't answer it and it's going to be on your mind and you don't have that conflict resolution, you're going to constantly be thinking about it. Even if you're not acting on it, you're going to ruin your day over a single moment. And it's on you. It's not the person that started it. It may have been the spark. It was on you to resolve that. And we're talking about this week creating change and creating a shift, right? You can't change if you're stressed out. You can't force life. You will do the same thing over and over and over again until you deal. And I'll talk more about that tomorrow because I'm going to get deep into the, the creation mind. It's going to be kind of a little bit of a spiritual week, people. Get ready. Because we have to talk about... I had to open it up with stress, though, because... This is what keeps people stuck. So now that it's an epidemic. Okay, another epidemic. So what's the solution, World Health Organization? Give us a solution. Well, if there was a solution, it wouldn't be an epidemic. Well, it's I, an epidemic because nobody has the resolution for it because they choose not to. I do. Tell them to come to the Stress Mastery <laughs> Podcast. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired. inspired.